this video tutorial I will explain what is single sign on and SAML. Single sign on allows end user to access multiple web applications using just one set of credentials. Because of single sign on, the user no need to remember multiple usernames and passwords for different applications. Once user logged in, the user can access other connected web applications without logging in again until their authenticated session expires. For example, once user logged into Google website, the user can access LinkedIn website, Instagram website, Pinterest website without logged in again. What is SAML? SAML stands for Security Assertion Markup Language. And SAML is popular industry standard XML based data exchange format which is used for single sign on which is nothing but SSO. And SAML is an open standard which means you can develop your own SAML integration without additional licensing or access cost. There are number of open source SAML toolkits available for different programming languages and the application like CRM systems will usually include the ability to manage SAML authentication. Now we will see SAML roles. There are four entities which are involved in SAML interaction. The first one is principal which is nothing but end user. The second one is client which is nothing but end user's browser. The third one is identity provider or IDP. And uh, this is the system which is in charge of authenticating the end user. The fourth one is service provider or SP. And uh, service provider is nothing but the application the end user is uh, accessing. How does SAML work? SAML requests SP and IDP to first establish trusted relationship with one another. They do this during integration by providing each other with relevant metadata and certificates. IDP and SP also agree on some configuration settings that determine what information is sent in SAML messages. One of the setting is the value that two system will use to identify the end user. This is called the federation ID. The federation ID is nothing but end user's email address. And once integrated, IDP can begin authenticating users on behalf of SP. As part of SAML process, there are two types of messages are sent between SP and the IDP. The first one is authentic request which is sent from SP to IDP. This is the request to authenticate the user. It is embedded within a redirect. And the second one is SAML assertion which is sent from IDP to SP and uh, this is signed XML document which contains uh, the authentication details of the end user. There are two types of uh, SSO based authentication flow. The first one is uh, IDP initiated, the second one is uh, SP initiated. First we will see IDP initiated. If an end user interacts with uh, IDP initially, then IDP sends uh, SAML accession to the SP when the user access the SP site. In this case, authentic request is not required. Second one is SP initiated. If an end user interacts with SP initially, then SP needs to send authentic request to the IDP. The IDP authenticates the user, then it returns the SAML assertion. Here we will see IDP initiated flow. In this, there are three entities are there, Identity Provider, Users Browser and Service Provider. Step 1. Users Browser sends a credential to Identity Provider. Identity Provider validates the credential and if it is valid credential, then it generates SAML assertion and sends the SAML assertion to Users Browser. That is the second step. And uh, SAML assertion will contain the user's uh, federation ID, which is nothing but uh, user email ID and uh, additional data about the user and uh, data about uh, 
how the user is authenticated and when the user is authenticated and also it contains x509 certificate public key of idp in the third step users browsers forwards saml assertion to service provider and in the fourth step service provider examines the saml assertion and validating the idp's x509 certificate public key and if it is valid then service provider gives end user access to their services using the federation id as the identifier for the end user here we will see sp initiated flow and in this flow there are three entities identity provider users browser and service provider step 1 users browser visit service provider and step 2 is service provider sends saml authn request to the users browser and step 3 the users browser's forward request and redirect users to identity provider and step 4 idp checks whether user has a currently authenticated session open if the session is not open then idp provides the end user with login screen then end user has to enter username and password in the login screen and send those credential to identity provider and idp will check whether the credential is valid or not if it is valid credential then idp will generate saml assertion and send the saml assertion to users browser that is the fifth step and saml assertion will contain the users federation id which is nothing but user email id and additional data about the user and data about how the user is authenticated and when the user is authenticated and also it contains x509 certificate public key of idp and the sixth step is user browser forwards saml assertion to service provider and the seventh step is service provider examines the assertion and validating idp's x509 certificate public key if it is valid then service provider gives access to their services to the end user using federation id as the identifier for the end user in case of sso what happens when a user logs out there are two options that can occur based on the behavior the idp and sb have agreed upon the first one is independent logout the user is logged out of the session that they currently have with either idp only or sp only and uh, the second option is uh, single logout the user is logged out of all the sessions with uh, sp and idp that they are using the same single sign on and uh, idp also updates any other third party sp sessions that support uh, single logout you can get uh, java source code link for uh, each video from the description section of the video and uh, here you can see the video and uh, to see the description click on this uh, more and uh, here you can see the description and uh, here you can see the links and uh, click on this links to get the java source code